Good afternoon. Oh, you're not so sleepy. Good, good. <laughs> well, I'm delighted to return to Dhaka for CBA 7 and to have the opportunity to meet so many practitioners on community-based adaptation from all over the world. I'd like to thank you for attending the session today on human rights, equity, and legal aspects of community-based adaptation. I'm very much looking forward to hearing from you. You're the experts. And also, uh, we want to have a very interactive dialogue at the tables um, later on. I'm convinced that equity and human rights aspects of adaptation need to be given more emphasis, more attention. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank CDKN, the World Resources Institute of the um, United Nations University, Institute for Environment and Human Security, and of course IIED, who helped to make this session a reality. You may recall that in the opening session on Monday, Salim Huck spoke about the climate justice dialogue. And I'd like now to take an opportunity to tell you a little more about it. The Climate Justice Dialogue is a joint initiative of the Mary Robinson Foundation Climate Justice and the World Resources Institute that aims to mobilize political will and creative thinking to shape an equitable and ambitious international climate agreement by 2015. Central to this is the need to mobilize what we call constituencies, mobilize almost like a social movement around the world, constituencies around the globe to demand greater urgency and ambition from political leaders. And I hope you've got the point now, you are a constituency of community-based adaptation, so we're going to try to mobilize you. A climate justice narrative amplifies the voices of the most vulnerable and can help to change the conversation on climate change and create this demand. By focusing on issues of fairness and justice, this narrative can serve as a kind of pressure point on the road to an international climate agreement in 2015, as well as, of course, the post-2015 development agenda. Adaptation policymakers and practitioners are an important constituency that can be influential in informing and mobilizing demand for climate action. You work with the unequal impacts of climate change on a daily basis, and you see firsthand how climate change is undermining human rights. An equitable international climate change agreement will need to give equal emphasis to adaptation and mitigation. However, the focus of discussions on equity and justice in the negotiations is predominantly, as I think you know, on mitigation. We need to ensure that the new agreement recognizes action by countries on adaptation as well as mitigation, in addition to providing the support needed to protect vulnerable communities and build adaptive capacity. The Climate Justice Dialogue features a series of convenings or conversations taking place across the globe over the next three years with a view to creating a narrative, collecting ideas and building momentum momentum for a new agreement in 2015. This session is one of those conversations coming in the same month as a workshop in Chile and a conference in Dublin. In Chile, just two weeks ago, negotiators from several Latin American countries joined civil society and academia from Chile to explore what climate justice and equity means to them. Key outcomes of the discussion were that one, Climate justice is not about refraining from climate action because others are dragging their heels. This risks leaving the world with unmanageable and costly climate impacts. Leading on the transition to a low-carbon climate resilient society makes sense for many middle-income countries. Two, equity is not only about sharing effort or burden, it's about opportunity and the transition to a better future. Action by all, both developed and developing nations, is required, as is a shared legal framework that holds countries accountable to each other. Three, a new narrative on climate justice is needed to enhance and minds and build the political will for action on climate change. And as many of you have heard, last week in Dublin, my foundation co-hosted an EU presidency conference on hunger, nutrition and climate justice with the Irish government. 
This was, I think, for all of us who participated, a really exciting conference, as more than 100 of the 300 people attending were grassroots participants from regions including Asia, Africa, Latin America, the Pacific, and the Arctic. Their participation in the event injected energy, enthusiasm, vitality, and realism into the discussions and gave validity to the proceedings. As one of the participants, Mitchell Lay from Antigua said, no one can represent you like you can represent yourself. Some of the key messages from that event were, and I just go through them, local knowledge has to be the foundation on which research and solutions are built. Platforms need to be established for real dialogue between all stakeholders to enable local priorities and solutions to be communicated and scaled up. Laws, policies, and international frameworks aren't enough. They need to be translated into action through resources and awareness ra raising. UN Women will like this one. Don't keep half the population outside the door. Women have an important role to play, but care must be taken to ensure that interventions don't just add to women's workload. Difficult issues need to be addressed, including land ownership, power struggles, inequalities, the rule of law, and the need to uphold human rights. The private sector must be engaged more proactively. Resources are needed to deliver change at the local level. There was recognition of the need to deliver on commitments to provide financing for adaptation and to make it flow at local level. It's simply too hard to get at the money that is there and there's not enough money in the pot. Finally, there was a recognition that poor people have to adapt to climate change because they have no other option. The urgency felt locally needs to be felt internationally in rich countries and trigger action. And that's what the Climate Justice Dialogue aims to do. The adaptation community, those working on community-based adaptation, have an important role to play in being vocal on the impacts climate change is having on human rights and equity. We want to listen to you so that your experience shapes a narrative on adaptation that we can bring to the international stage. Equity and justice are central to understanding and framing the risks posed by climate change on vulnerable communities. And many adaptation practitioners are adopting rights-based approaches to their work, and we're very keen to encourage this. We also need to get the message out to the adaptation community that we need an international climate change agreement because there's a certain point beyond which people won't be able to adapt. There is, as we know, and it's rather alarming that it's coming closer, a tipping point, and we must work together to ensure we don't pass that threshold. Today, we have time to start a dialogue, but it's just the start. I hope that you'll continue to work with us in the rest of 2013 and 2014 and in 2015 to help us to mobilize the adaptation community around issues of equity and justice. And for those of you who want to know more after this, please speak to my colleague, Mary Faherty, either today or tomorrow, if you have additional ideas that you'd like to share with us, because we're in a learning curve. We don't know all the answers. We need you to help us um, to develop the dialogue going beyond what we discussed today. Um, I'm, I've actually been speaking quite quickly because Heather warned me that she'd actually cut me off if I went on too long. So, <laughs> Heather, I'm in my last little paragraph here, so please be <laughs> indulgent for a moment. I look forward to listening, genuinely. Um, I'm going to be sitting with you at the tables, and I look forward to listening to the perspective of community-based adaptation practitioners, because that's why I came here from Dublin yesterday. We need you as a constituency of demand a constituency that demands fairness and justice. And I'm very much looking forward now to engaging in this energetic and insightful and vital dialogue. Thank you very much.